the Jews couldn't get enough of me and my Catholicism, and I couldn't get enough of their Friday night Shabbos dinner. And Friday night was wonderful for me. We sang Hebrew songs, we passed the challah around, we drank the wine. It was a time of sharing and growing. And my C, my Catholic C, consciousness, caring, grew wider and wider. I was able to take in more people. I had been Catholic all my life, and of course my friends were mostly Catholic at St. Margaret Mary. But now it began to broaden, and I saw a bigger God, and I couldn't limit God. And I said to, my, to the Catholics that were there, hey, remember how Pope John the 23rd, when the rabbi came to see him, he ran out with his arms open wide and said, welcome, I am Joseph, your brother. We were so united, they were our parent religion. So we began to be much more connected and I am so grateful to God for that. And you know that that Shabbos meal was the origin of our Catholic mass. Good, a few good people in here know that. Well, there was only one thing, and I think Cynthia told you already. There was one thing, and you married people would know. What was I missing? A man. How do you solve a man problem? That's what I had. <laughs> I had blind dates. I put an ad in the paper. <laughs> I didn't, but my friend did. She says, you deserve somebody, and we tried. <laughs> Finally, I realized, after a lot of tears, Maybe God didn't want me to have a mate. Maybe I was simply to be God's girl only. So that night, I remember saying the prayer, the Burger King prayer, I call it, the Burger King. Okay, God, have it your way. <laughs> <laughs> Voila, the very next day, I'm stirring my vegetarian chili. And I notice the phone is blinking, the answer phone. And I go to it, and I hear my close, wonderful friend Lynn say, these words are, you know, they're, it's like embedded in here. You can't take them out. Adele, I met a man who reads Thomas Merton. I want you to meet him. <laughs> you have to know that I had run a Merton group in my home for about 12 years. So I had a lot of people come, we would study Merton. Where is he? Oh, I brought him here. He's my guru. Oftentimes, oftentimes I'd say to Tom, can't you find me a man? <laughs> Maybe he did, because this is a man that read Thomas Merton, Lynn said. Now what ne Lynn neglected to tell me was, he had no roof over his head. <laughs> he had no money in his pocket. <laughs> but she insisted and wanted us to go. He, he did come to a Merton meeting, but I wasn't there. And then she insisted we meet for breakfast. Well, you want to know about prejudice? It was all there. Oh, God, would he be shabby? Would he smell? <laughs> but he came with Lynn, pulled her chair out, was so courteous, was so suave. I was watching how he ate. He ate normal. <laughs> he ate normal. And I just realized, and Lynn, Lynn said it, you know, trust yourself. Well, what happened was, at some point, a family, Catholic family from St. James had invited Jim to come and live with them. And he was a handyman. Oh, God, have I learned about handy? I didn't trust him in the beginning. Don't touch my, don't touch him, because I didn't know, but he was. And so he was there, and we began to have these long conversations on the phone. And I realized I liked his funny bone, his love of books. But Lynn, I went back to Lynn. He has no money. <laughs> I have it all. Now, ladies, let's be honest. That would get in the way with you, too, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah. Come on, raise your hand. Raise your hand. I wasn't alone. 
Well, Lynn looked at, Lynn's a wise woman, and she looked at me, looked down on me, actually, and said, Adele, it's not your money. It's God's money. Now I challenge you, how many think of your money as God's money? Anybody hands up? Good, three, four people. It took me in that moment, you know that old saying, when the student is ready, the teacher appears, I was ready. And I, it was like magic. It was like grace laid on me. And I realized, maybe God gave me the money so that Jim and I could be together. So, from that point on, we were married in St. In St. James, in St. Margaret Mary Church, with the community in the big chapel, with the community, my Hebrew, with the Hebrew prayers, Arabic prayers, um, Gaelic prayers. Father Wall said a Gaelic prayer for us. We were blessed. And the congregation at the end stood up and to the tune of John Williams, we put the big sound on John Williams, <laughs> Alleluia Chorus from the Empires of the Sun. And we danced in that chapel. My dear friends, that was 14 years ago. Alleluia. 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 Ooh. <laughs> Will you come home with me? <laughs> Alleluia is right. What can a nun learn from a bum? She can learn a lot. I tell you these stories so that your mind, and I know that you're there. You wouldn't be in this, you wouldn't be working with the church if you didn't believe it. But I tell you this because our minds grow. The small C, the conscientious, the, the communion, the caring. I found another face of God. And what did it do for me? It changed my world. I have never been happier. Now, when Lynn said that about it's God's money, sidebar, I went to my friend. We used to meet. She's a very wealthy woman, very wealthy. She does business contracts. She has three homes in, around the United States. And I'll say this the way she, she was doing it. She was complaining. You know how we can complain about our money? I don't care if we have millions of dollars. I'm well, I looked at her and did just what Lynn had said to me. Jerry, it's not your money. It's God's money. She looked at me and said, sure, but I'm not ready to go there. <laughs> I admire her honesty. I admire that. All right, with Jim on board, money became a pretty important topic for discussion. I mean, I had been a saver all my life. I don't spend foolishly. But what he did was help me begin to see there are other ways, other habits you can have around your money. You know, it's, uh, Cynthia mentioned we do this money talk, women and money talk and a cup of tea. You'd be amazed, and maybe you know it already, and I still learn how some beliefs and habits and what I should do, and what my parents told me should do, and you never spend it on this, and you only spend it on that, or you spend it on everything. All those notions, all those beliefs can control your money life, and sometimes it doesn't work for you, and you want to be free. And that's what this is about, learning to be free with our money. 